my gosh, I'm live. Good, 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 good. I've had just one or two technical issues on this. So um, I really, really hope um, that you have, well, you've had time for a cup of tea, at least, because I'm sorry that I'm slightly past my six o'clock slot. Um, but I hope you're doing very well. Today, I wanted to talk about the value of a morning yoga practice. And it can be flipping hard to practice yoga in the morning. And I wanted to speak to the yoga dissident, Akka Nadia Jelani, about this. Let's see if I can go live with her. We can um, go live together. Hold on, hold on. Hello, Andy. It's nice to see you there. Yay, we made it. Hello, Kat. Hi, we got here in the end. Got here in the end. Technology, eh? It's absolutely lovely when it works. But the trouble is, is we all get expectations that it's going to work all the time. I know, but, you know, we've done lives before, haven't we, in all kind of, like, manner of sort of faces. You were in the garden last time, I think, we spoke. And we always find our way, so it's all good. We always find our way, so thank you very much, everybody, for being patient. And it's great to see you all. It's lovely, lovely, lovely to see you. Um, what I would like to talk to you today about, Nadia, is a morning yoga practice. This is not something that comes easy for me. And um, we've got a couple of questions from people in our community. And I just wanted to let you know, everyone, you can type in some questions for Nadia and let's see if we can get some of that wisdom insight. Now, a little bit of background, Nadia, it's so flipping lovely having you here because you are such a great writer. You're a good friend to me, of course, but also I love what you muse about the yoga world. You're, you're just thoughtfulness, thoughtfulness about the world that we're in and the world of yoga. Yay, hearts for that. I'm not on, on my own uh, thinking that you are just a little bit Thank awesome you. with, um, yeah, just some insights about the way things are working. But also, I really love your classes. You are also yes. a flipping lovely teacher. No, that means you a did lot. A it means a lot. It was really amazing to have you at the class um, that we did. When did we do it? When did oh, I do that? In the it summer? was sometime in the summer. It feels like a million years ago, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life it goes does. too fast. Life goes too fast. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I think it was in June sometime and it was such a wonderful, yeah, I really enjoyed it too. Um, and I was really moved by the feedback, like really, really touched. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to coming and joining again and, and doing a series of classes um, in a couple of weeks, I think yeah, it is, isn't it? So, that's right, yeah. that's right. Yeah, you've kindly agreed to do a morning series with us. Um, it'll be 7.30 a.m. UK time. And I do believe that that's after the clocks go back. So it starts on the 24th. So right. everybody, that's like the equivalent of 8.30. So that's like easy peasy, right? <laughs> right, you can get out of bed. You can do it. You can do it. I know you can, people. And that's, yeah, your classes are so good. They're so, so worth it. Um, what I got from the last class that you did is not only a real sense of inclusivity. So everybody, they, you know, it wasn't the sort of, easiest class like it was a lot of the old vinyasas which i'm like Whoa, i'm a bit out of shape for that lot but you made it really there's always variations there's always different versions all bodies are welcome and that's what i love about your classes well thank you yeah it's really important to me actually just before we get started yeah. on like you know talking about the morning practice which is not easy for me either by the way um and uh, you know it's kind of We'll come to that actually. We'll come. We'll come to talk about that more. But I think in terms of classes, like for me, I was talking to somebody recently about, um, you know, kind of what they wanted me to teach at a new class that's starting, and I kind of said, you know, there's, there's never. I never want to teach a class where people can't come. So you know, I've got a class actually that I teach regularly at the moment, and a woman in a wheelchair comes, and she can get out of her chair, um, and you know. I, she asked me if she could come and I said, yeah, like we'll work it out. Do you know what I mean? Because, of course. um, and you know, so I've always want everything to be for all bodies, all abilities, you know, it, it sort of it hurts my heart a little bit when people say, oh, you know, it's not for me. I don't think that's for me or I don't think I can mm -hmm. and all of that. Cause it's like, that's my job. I'll work out how you can sort of yes. find your way here. Yeah. Obviously online, online, it's, 
<clears throat> different you've got to take some of that responsibility i can't kind of suggest directly i can't see everybody depending on the size of the group but i think um yeah i'm never gonna because I, I mean i don't go to dropping classes anymore you know i just practice with friends uh, or my own but um when i you know obviously the reason i mean i wrote the book and there was loads of experience behind behind um some of this stuff I talked about in terms of I'm looking up there because the bookshelf's up there and the book is over there looking at me. Um, but I had um, lots of dropping classes I've been to over the decades. I've practiced in London mainly and other places as well. And it's always um, kind of struck me how so many classes are kind of, the teacher kind of just tells you what to do. And mm -hmm. I don't know whether they're really looking. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's not always time for options and things. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not saying that I've got it nailed at all. But I think I've got a f kind of, I think I'm kind of, you know, doing a decent job because I feel like I look, and I think that's the first thing you want to do, isn't it, when you're teaching? And also encourage dialogue. Like people never want to tell you about their injuries. They never want to tell you about their stuff. But if you kind of create the conditions, create the environment, hopefully, you know, and I, you know, and I do, I do people do tell me, you know, privately, obviously, it's useful for me to know in advance. And um, yeah, so yeah, no, I, I always want to teach a class that, I mean, I'm never going to cover all the bases. I know that I can only sort of, I do my best based on like experience and kind of like thinking who might be in the room, you know, and if if I don't know about all the injuries, I just kind of try to preempt. But anyway, long so, preamble. Yeah. And don't do yourself down. We've got a high par on too says you've got it nailed and you do. You do. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, I, don't know, I don't know. I think there's, that's really kind, but I think there's always, uh, room for growth and um, yeah, yeah well there's a, there's a lot of humility here and that's also a sign of a very very good teacher I think when um, yeah anyway there's a whole conversation that I could go yeah, on we could talk about that one humility couldn't we right but, we really, but let's talk about more we really practice. could do um, yeah that's the thing you and I we can always talk and talk because it's just all the things that come out are so interesting but yes so your class is starting next to find out is first of all our hearts from moon dance community and to you too um what i would like to find out is the morning practice now you in your book you're really um keen and you really emphasize the fact that the practice is a practice and it's something that we need the discipline for which is a little bit of a difficult word for a lot of people we need to sort of get the motivation to get on the map, but that's slightly the point of it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting actually that you say that because I think there are a lot of people who don't like the word discipline. And I think for me, I mean, I had quite a destructive relationship with that word for a long mm. time. I think I've turned it into a stick to beat myself with. And oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. These, this is real life. Um, so I think, yeah, and, and I, I, I've had conversations with people who say that you know discipline is a really tricky word for them for various reasons because mm -hmm. it's got connotations with various things um but i suppose i don't have a massively tricky relationship with motivation but i think because of the current climate we're in where there's just like motivational stuff everywhere and i mean not doing a disservice i've got a really great relationship with my mum but she's a psychologist and i kind of grew up around a lot of positive psychology which is amazing but i was a teenager and i sort of rejected everything that was going mm -hmm. on at home and I wasn't interested in kind of like that kind of thing. I see all the benefits of it mm. now. I've got older, I've gotten wiser. But I sometimes think that discipline is the thing really that we need to make friends with. And it's less about motivation and something else that we could maybe think about. Um, sorry, I've gone on to a different story here, but I'm just gonna tell you a quick story to illustrate what happened. An example of me not feeling disciplined and me not feeling motivated and and, and a new enlightened lightning idea that I had. And, and it came from my mum actually, cause I'm talking about her anyway, but she was visiting recently and there was a boxing class starting nearby that I wanted to try. Okay, I tried it last night, it was amazing. I loved it, I wanna go again. But it was at 8 p.m. Mm. Now, I'm not used to doing things at 8 p.m. like that, right? Mm. Um, particularly, in the wet, you know, the, the way things are going with the evenings, it's darker, mm. it's colder, I've got a cycle there in the dark, all of that. Anyway, my mum said to me, I was leaving her, dropping her off at the airport, and I said, oh, I really want to go to this class this week, but I'm not sure. I've got a feeling I'm, knowing me, I don't think I'm going to make it. I booked it. I planned it. But I think I might slope off. And she said, oh, that's a really good time. And I thought, that's a strange, that's a strange perspective. Because in my head, I was so certain it was a really bad time for me. Yeah. 
And then she said, it's about intention, isn't it? She said, do you want to go to the boxing class? And I thought, well, yeah, I do. And she said, well, you know, it's go then. It's about intention. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yes. the time wasn't perfect for me. But actually, in the end, I went there. I had a great time. I knew I would. I didn't really know what I was doing. That's part of it. I've gone there because I want to learn. And I just came out buzzing and thinking, oh, my gosh, I've unlocked this barrier, this barrier of the late evening class. And I'm, I know I'm talking about night times, but, you know, we can, it's the same sort mm. of thing in the morning. Mm. Um, obviously, our bodies are different and we can talk about all of that. And, you know, bodies are in different shape in the morning. And um, but I think there's huge benefits to practicing in the morning. I've always seen myself as a morning practice person. Right. And it's not easy for me, but I think it's designed for my personality. But I can, I think it could be a benefit to everybody. Yeah. I mean, should um, we talk about kind of, yeah, should we talk about like how people can start or what they might do or? Yeah, do? I mean, so there's one thing that you said, Moondance community is absolutely on the same track as you, by the way. No, <laughs> and I am no too, evenings, like the right. evenings. But the thing that I found interesting and I would like to take up on that is how you felt after you did it. Because it's, it wasn't only the fact that you had done something new, you had done something that you'd wanted to do, but it's the fact that you'd almost impressed your, you'd wowed yourself, right? You were like, I didn't think I was going to do it, but go me. That's what I felt a little bit from that. And yeah. that sense of like, I can do hard things. I suppose so. I suppose so. Yeah. I mean, I think I thought, you know what, the whole way there, I'm cycling there, right? Not to get too much into the memoir aspect of this whole experience, but I got on the bike and I was kind of like, it was raining, got my poncho, put it on, got there. I just thought, you know what, if you never do it again, just do it tonight. Yeah. Okay. Good, yeah. Just one, the one day at a time kind of good angle. You. The, and the thing is, I got in there and I just thought, this is ridiculous. What I'm doing is ridiculous because it's not my normal. Um, and I had such a great time. We did things in pairs, obviously, because it's, yeah. it's the nature of the nature of the thing. And I think I was having I was one of the one of the you know people having the best time because I was sort of bouncing around and like my partner was laughing at me and I was having a really good time. And it was just like, and yeah, and I left feeling like, oh, my God, I want that again. And I don't care about the 8pm because, you know, you're kind of like, when am I going to eat? When am I going to do a lot? The whole thing is really confusing. Um, but then, you know, I know, the, I know other people who do um, things um, that they're kind of working towards, you know, like this. And, you know, you have to kind of like if you're training for a marathon, I know somebody who's doing that or if, or if you're kind of doing something that is kind of a long game, which is what I think practice is, by the way. Practice is. You know, it's, it's not kind of like a one time thing. This is we're building something here. We're building something to support us um, for us to return to and. All the things, right? These, this, this conversation is really useful for folks to keep in mind. I really like that. That remembrance that it's not actually about the practice right now. This is about the practice. Yeah, that's what I think. I think it's it's, it's about building and adding. And like, if you go, if you go like the whole marathon, not sprint kind of analogy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the thing is, it's like. And obviously I wrote a book and I was, I was comparing that to running a marathon. And I know it's not physical. I mean, not to be honest, I found it a very physical experience, even though I was sitting a lot. But because it's very visceral writing, emotional yeah. writing, which is what I, yeah. I do. I can't not write in an emotional way. I'm always interested in like getting the stuff out. And I think the practice is about that as well. It's about tuning in, getting in touch. How am I feeling? What's going on? Um, but also the long game. It's like the eyes on the prize. But the thing mm. is, when you get the prize whatever that might be, you know, it might be finishing the marathon, it might be for me finishing the book, there's always going to be a next thing. Yeah. So I think it's kind of like, and we don't stop running or stop writing or stop practicing. I think, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? It's like an ongoing mm. thing. So I think that, um, yeah, I think not the practice for today. That's not the most important thing. I think mm -hmm. the most important thing is having done it for today, yeah. knowing that you're adding to the bank of the, your life you know and whatever you're doing in your life and and um yeah and those small those small things are little wins i think and you're learning and adding to the journey but i think the thing is that when you have got a goal at the end so i'm going back to the marathon again but if, if you're if you've got a date set for a thing that you're training for i know this is in practice we're not training and sorry i do i know i waffle on a bit but it's you can't stray from the schedule but you have to do it and i think that's where discipline comes in yeah. because if you if you remember so i mean i'm this person i'm the same person who kind of struggled to um who has at times in my life thought oh it doesn't matter mm -hmm. i'm not going to go i'm too tired 
I'm too yeah. depressed, you know, miserable, yeah. um, sad, or um, any number of reasons. And also, I know that you're doing a lot around the menopause at the moment. And also thinking about kind of like, I'm, you know, I don't know whether I'm entering that or I'm a, definitely heading that direction. But my my body, hormones, whatever it is, has been changing mm -hmm. a lot. And mm -hmm. I think I stopped recently wondering whether it's the perimenopause or not. And I've started thinking, mm -hmm. just observe what it is. Yeah. Like, whatever, hey. and, and respond to that. So it doesn't, I mean, I do, I mean, obviously I want to know. I want to know the facts and figures of everything. But the point is, it's not going to change how I'm feeling. So if I'm feeling anxious or if I'm feeling sluggish or whatever the things mm. might be then i think it doesn't mean don't practice i think it means practice has to change yes and practice has to kind of yes we need to use the practice to respond to how we're feeling yes um and it's taken me i'm in my 40s now uh, and i've only realized this in recent years and, and it's because something you know it's quite a few serious life events happened in the last mm. few years that forced me i was on the floor and i had no way of practicing the way i practiced before so it's kind of like either we chuck practice in the bin which I did do for a bit, and then I came crawling back because I was like, "Well, I need something." I came crawling back, but it, I couldn't do it the way. And I think a lot of people went through a version of that, possibly um, in 2020 when we we're all mm. stuck at home. Mm. Um, you know, whatever their practice might have been, it might not be yoga. You know, it could be any number of things. I think we had to, we found out that we had to practice in different ways. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, I, th I think that's so. Uh, there's, it's so rich the amount <laughs> the amount that's there. Um, and I, I think that's right, is how I see a practice is that I practice so that I have something which is a bedrock, which I can rely on when shit goes down, because it inevitably does. Yeah, like, for sure. It, not in a bad way, but it's, you know, the nature of life is transient. The nature of our loved ones is transient. So, you know, life is going to present challenges. And I think the nice thing about having a practice is it means we don't necessarily need to lean on less healthy solutions, put it that way, oh, yeah. when yeah. stuff and, and, goes and, down. Well, yeah, I think that's the best. I mean, and, and I'm, an, I'm not going to say I'm an expert on this, but I've got loads of experience of leaning on disruptive, unhealthy things. And obviously I've written about them yeah. in the book. And I thank you for your comment. Love that perspective. Thank you for saying that. Um, the way we do something has to change as opposed to don't do. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think so. Um, uh, what was I going to say? What were we talking about? I've just had a complete blank. Well, um, oh, yeah, disruptive things. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I think having something to go to, and, and I think also just to speak to those people, if there is anybody who watches this or listens to this who's struggling with something, um, you know a destructive thing or something that isn't helpful to their life and they'd like to go to find something more restorative and rejuvenating or whatever i was thinking about this before we came on the live mm -hmm. earlier in the day actually i was thinking you know because we wanted we came here to talk about morning practice and i think morning practice is really difficult for a lot of people yeah. but i would say if you're struggling with something that's often we we're on our knees with something and then we want to replace it with something really good yeah. and we we build it up and we make it really sort of difficult because how can we go from that to that you know mm -hmm. it's like got to be a gradual gentle kind process and you know like we are here to talk about morning practice and i am going to be teaching 7 30 a.m classes but if you're you've got a lot going on then maybe you know just be wise about when, when to start practicing mm -hmm. in the morning it might not be the right time for you to radically force yourself to get out of bed mm -hmm. if you've got loads of other stuff going on like you know Maybe you build up to the morning. Maybe you start at another time of day mm -hmm. that works for you better. Do you know what I mean? Because I know people who are evening people, you know, like the boxing thing I talked about. That I know people who that's their time. Yeah. They want to do the thing. And I'm the person who, in my head, for I was going to say decades. I mean, who knows? I, you know, I don't know if I'm exaggerating, but I, I always thought if I haven't practiced in the morning, it's done. You know, like I've missed it for the day. I love you know, it. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I think. And the thing is, I lived that way. It was like, if I didn't get it done in the morning, then I won't, I ain't going to get it done. It's like, we'll try again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And in a way, I think I still have that wiring in my head. But obviously, what's changed is that my behavior is changing. So, and it's, un and I think I'll still prefer to do it in the morning. Yeah. But, but it's kind of unlocked this thing yesterday um has unlocked oh my gosh now i have more flexibility what if i don't do it in the morning there's the option to do it in the evening lunchtime is there oh, right. you know what i mean so, 
<laughs> liberating. Or we but, create these barriers for ourselves. But, but the, well, I certainly the nice thing about a morning practice is that you know it's done and that you know you also can feel the benefits of it all day, right? Because I mean, I'm, I normally am a sort of lunch time or a break time or an evening time um, person generally, but I've been doing Lucy's morning classes and what I really like about them is just that feeling that you carry on the rest of the day with. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit, um, you're a little bit more bouncy you now after a practice. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And you know something, I've just had a flashback while you were talking mm. to um, years ago when I worked at a yoga studio and I was kind of ma managing it. And cause you know, just, just to say something about, um, we had a couple of questions that were sent in. I was just going to open my thing so that I don't forget so that we make sure that we answer them or I answer them. And, and please chip in if you want to answer them as well. But I, I just had a flashback to when I was working at yoga, yoga studio and my practice, you know, going along this line of like practice has to change. Mm -hmm. I used to have to go and open up the studio sometimes and be there at six. <laughs> like, <laughs> the dogs are getting out. Um, I'll carry on. But I used to have to go there at six and, and I used to get up really early. And my practice then was having a coffee in the morning on the sofa and in the dark and kind of just doing some breathing and doing some sitting and having some quiet time. So I think actually the practice that you do in the morning, it can be whatever you need it to be. And I think it's, uh, for me, it's all about just why, why do you want to do a morning practice? And I think for me, the biggest benefit is a check-in so and also it will set you up for the day because again i'm not i i really don't like i know people who who do this and i'm not going to be one of these people ever i don't think is that i would rather wake up at five to just have the quiet time because it will set me up for the day and sometimes that doesn't mean any postures if i need to get up at five i don't yeah. thankfully have to get up at five these days but then i know people who will like get up at the last minute and fly out the door that's not how i want to start my day so i think practice um work it out for yourself like what practice is and it can be i mean it can be a really sort of still practice it might not be a really dynamic we're going to be doing a combination of things when i'm mm. teaching and it will be dynamic and it will be but it's dynamic for everybody like we said at the beginning mm -hmm. um because i think movement is i mean i really love movement and i'm lucky i'm able-bodied and movement is possible for me but also i'm aware that other people have different mm -hmm. bodies and they might not have this full range so i will always as i said show different ways of doing things but I think movement is really good for waking up waking up the body and um carving out that time but if movement is not available you can still practice mm -hmm. is the, I suppose the long-winded point I'm making and I think it's about having that time to listen yeah. inwardly listen yeah check in even if that is what I was doing back in the day when I was managing the studio I would sit on the sofa in the kitchen we had a sofa where I was living in the kitchen and it was dark outside and I would look out the window and I would just ponder and let, let the thoughts come and observe the thoughts and then breathe and then I would go you know and I would do that for any any number of like minutes mm. or whatever I don't know I didn't have a set time do you know what I mean and that was it so I mean I suppose yeah I just want to make that point yeah. that you work out what's going to work yeah. for you and um i really like that and and i like that as having a morning practice of maybe just drinking a cup of tea peacefully. yeah that can be it but really just focusing on the tea yeah <laughs> totally and I, and I mean i suppose we all know don't we like i've got a i go in and out of this but it's like i know people who are like who really want to kind of discipline themselves around their phones mm. i've got friends and people i know who've mm. told me because i think i've got quite a good relationship with my phone mm. i mean i don't think i'm not always i haven't always had but it's like i'm not um, it's not compulsive for me, but it has been yeah. in the past. Um, and I love airplane mode. And I, uh, when I'm with company, airplane mode is on, and my phone is in my bag until mm -hmm. I'm on my own again. Um, and, the, and the, in the morning, it used to be right by my bed, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's in the bedroom still, but I don't. I would make sure I have that time, that quiet time in the morning, and then I open the phone That's because nice. as soon as you start the emails, as soon as you start wherever it is that you're opening Instagram, whatever. It's, you're in yeah. you're locked in and yeah. in my experience right mm -hmm. and you're locked in and then you're just going to keep going until it's time to mm -hmm. switch off and i just think if you delay everything slightly um yeah it, it creates a like. pocket of space yeah space and and i think that only in my experience it's only when we can have that little bit of space 
that we then are able to sort of access, oh, this is who I am. And it's like you were saying, that check-in moment. Now, let's quickly, because um, I'm aware that time, you and me, we talk, right? I do. <laughs> so, well, I'll, I'll just keep talking always. So, you know, I'm like that. With yeah, me too. You and I together can be, yeah. We we're, we're a very great, we're a great combo. So somebody who's, who was saying, one of our movers was saying, I feel a bit stiffer in the mornings. So it's harder time to practice because the body is stiffer. How do you approach that one, Nadia? Yes, um, and this person also said quite crucially, mm. if I may add, yes. should I go gently or push through? <laughs> now, yes. <laughs> so I'm of the school of, I'm not of the no pain, no gain approach ever. Mm. Whoever came up with that, I mean, let's just ignore. Um, I think that definitely go, we've got to go gently. The whole mm. thing is about going gently. Even when we're challenging yes. ourselves, going gently and also it says here um yeah so this person didn't mention pain but i'm always encouraging people um while we're talking about this question while we're answering this, this question to kind of differentiate between discomfort and pain because often in classes that i teach in real life you know i let people know particularly when they're new that it might be uncomfortable i mean it possibly will be at times i mean but then also when we go to the edge i'm obsessed with edge by the way just for anybody who's not been to a class with me before or um heard me speak but I talk about edge in the book quite a lot edge in a metaphorical sense but obviously the postures show mm. us edge in a physical sense about going to a place where you feel something and it might not be comfortable but if we keep going to that edge eventually it will change yes. but if we don't go to the edge nothing's going to change and i'm guessing also that we do these things because we want things to change right um emotionally spiritually physically or whatever so you yeah, answer this question this person's thing uh, just also to, to reassure this person um, aches, aches and pains are worse in the morning and that's also to be under, that's understandable because you've been lying in bed um, we're all a bit stiffer in the morning mm -hmm. you know that's one of the other benefits of practicing in the evening but we you know you warm up that's what you do you warm into it you keep checking in mm -hmm. definitely don't push through because what are you pushing through like no we want the practice to serve us yes. we don't want to be fighting with it so yeah that was a bit long-winded, but I hope that answered that question. No, that question. was beautiful. That was beautiful. And I'm so glad that um, that you were able to say that as well, because that's definitely my philosophy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you've, this has resonated with Chief Wow Wow. Great name. Beautifully said about going to the edge. And oh, I probably don't, I, I don't really go to the edge in my practice. If I'm going to be honest, yeah. I'm very much there doing my, if I can um, stick with my breath and stick with it in my practice, that's sort of good for me. But I quite like, um, I like the thought of edginess and I'm quite looking forward to a bit of, to sampling some of this, Nadia. So that makes me a little bit hungry. <laughs> but you know, but can I just add as well, actually, thank you for saying that because as much as I'm obsessed with edge, I'm not saying we've got to go to the edge every time. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so thank you for saying that in case I miss um, didn't make that really clear, because mm -hmm. I think being held mm -hmm. and being gentle yeah. is something I think all of us need yeah. more of, particularly those yes. of us who live in cities. Um, and I've started a new class, which is all about that, actually, in real life again in London, where it's about exploring the edges, mm -hmm. but being really thoughtful about them and perhaps not going all the way to any you know, going, tipping a toe in. I used the analogy when I was talking, mm. when I was teaching last week about going to the edge of the sea and just mm. tipping a foot in, yes. like putting the toe in. And then, but then you know that you can come back. And yes. then also you might, you might walk in a bit further, you might come back. And I think, um, so yeah, softness is something that I'm really big on. And I'm saying this is someone who was really pushing, pushing most of my life and softness and gentle and ease and joy because yeah. if we're not if there's can we find ease in the practice mm -hmm. and joy yes um if that those two things are not happening then something i think is missing and we need to look a bit harder and change perhaps what we're doing yeah. so yes. yes 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 here's the ease and joy to start the day what beautiful ways to start the day yeah yes and um i like the other uh, the other question which is a little bit about how do you train your family <laughs> So, yeah, this is a really good, um, somebody, just to say as well, that just want, I want to make sure this yes. person, um, before that one, somebody said, what's the most important thing to focus on if I've not got much time? I think we've kind of already answered that question in the previous 
conversation that we've been having, the convo we've been having around just taking some space in the morning yeah. and having your tea or, you know, whatever it is. But if somebody, if, if, if anybody wants some specific yoga thoughts on that, then I would just say, we do some breathing and then we do some sun salutations. Bang. The sun salutations, A, B, whichever one you want to do. There's loads of different versions. So those are the two that I practice. And um, that's the backbone of everything. So if somebody wanted something specific, uh, if that person wanted something specific, that's what I would say. But yeah, really funny. This question amused me, but I also felt for this person quite deeply. Mm. As somebody who doesn't have this issue, I do hear you. Um, they said, how can I get my family to understand that I need me time in the morning? Everyone mm. wants peace with me. Mm. Yes. Okay. So I had two thoughts around this. Um, first is that we need to have a conversation with the family. I don't know who the family is. So if there's children you know if his partner who um i don't know what the setup is but mm. let's say there's an adult in the situation mm. um obviously with children we can't really i mean it depends on the age of the children you know like obviously if you're dealing with 10 year olds then you know you can explain to a degree but um with adults i mean i think we need to have a conversation with these people with the family and say what the situation is what we need yeah. um and you know, and, and if you're lucky enough to have a spare, have a room that you can go to and shut the door, then, mm. you know, you can explain that, you know, I'm going to be in there. And when, while the door's shut, I'm on, I'm on, I'm offline. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm, I'm unavailable. Um, and make sure your phone is far away or on airplane mode. And then that's that. If you don't have a luxury space, um, I actually thought of this. Okay. This might sound a bit wacky and it might not appeal, but one thing I would say as well is if, if, if this, fa if the family is not understanding and not willing to accommodate, then I would say leave the house, um, which might sound a bit radical, but you know, 7 a.m. or whatever it is, like I've done this myself actually, when I lived with someone, I um, like I, I would have had to practice in the kitchen and I did practice in the kitchen, but sometimes I just wanted to be on my own, mm. out of the building, do you know what I mean, out of the flat. And I think that the only way to really get that is is that you can you leave and and make yourself unavailable and i think you can and then you know you can do that early in the morning you can do that in the evening and just be like you know i'm going and then they can't what are they going to do um so I'm, obviously i'm saying you know to do this kindly and explain to them but i do think if people are not respecting the boundary which is exactly what this is mm -hmm then we need to make ourselves unavailable and just leave the house and then also because i think Again, taking the practice in the broader sense, because I like to think about practice in broad sense, not just postures. Walking meditation, mm, a wonderful yes. practice that I really enjoy. I haven't been doing it so much recently, but I will again, mm. because being alone and walking is something that I did so much of when I was writing my book. And it was the thing that, it was the only thing that worked to unravel and let things surface um like i ride my bike like uh, a lot now and it doesn't it's not the same as walking like it's just there's just no way because i'm dealing with you know traffic and all of that mm. um one foot in front of the other and it's such a powerful metaphor mm. um is what i would do so yeah so i would say like if you've got space take the space have a conversation shut the door or leave the house you just got to get out of the house if they're not respecting the boundary uh, yeah I um I had a partner who didn't quite um, get my need for practice, and the way that she managed to understand it was she saw the kind of person I was if I didn't yes. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Versus when I did, and then she was like, "Oh, maybe you need to go and do your practice now." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why you do it. Yeah, when they see when they see when you emerge, exactly. Then the penny drops but i mean if you're finding just for this person like if they're finding it hard to kind of get started yeah because people are running in i've been in situations where i've shut the door and then you know if you've got a child running in that's not ideal um so yeah we need to explain and then and then eventually yeah they will see they'll see how important it is and when, when you love people when you love someone and you know that this thing whatever it is yeah. running yeah. whatever it is uh, you know practicing whatever it is means so much to them i mean it's you, you let them do it and it's, yeah They're absolutely and it's a um it's a bit of a cliche but you can't give from an empty cup and i think yeah. what practice does is it fills our cups it makes us feel like we're a, we're in a place where we're able to be ourselves again and um 
when we're replenished, then we're just able to be there for other people so much more. So to be the wife, partner, whatever it is that you are for somebody else and to be the mum that you want to be instead of the kind of maybe the slightly irritated, frustrated, this is who I am personally when I don't practice, I'm that person. Um, also, but, you know, those yeah. are things, I've interrupted you, but of course, because those, those are the things that life you know life is happening we're moving around in life right and stuff is happening and we're going to get irritated i mean i live in a really sometimes quite challenging city and some of the you know and things and all the knocks and people don't look where they're going and they're looking at their phones and it gets tiring just getting out of people's way and that's mm -hmm. going to build up but yeah. i think if you've got your check-in that you've had earlier in the day in the morning yes. And again, some people are night people and if they want, I mean, why not do it a.m. and p.m., do you know what I mean? Or it might be a different yes. practice that you do in the evening. It might be a journaling practice. It might be a walking practice, mm. whatever it is. Mm. But I think that these are the ways that we come back to ourselves. And that's what I said about listening. Yeah. Um, and I always use that, you know, Richard Freeman opens his book, um, Mirror, The Mirror of Yoga. Where is it? I, mean, I can't believe I've just had a blank around what it's called. But because um, it's such a wonderful book, but he opens his book with, all yoga starts with listening and i quoted it in my book as well because um i think we could just say that 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 you know life is about listening to here to inside to ourselves um and we use our practice to support life so yes. um yeah filling the cup um but also having that have and topping it up all the time is is important um and then and kind of i always feel like it's about coming back to zero you know like rather than being at 10 20 100 even which would be like awful place to be but i have been there where you're just kind of you've lost yourself you know and that's what practice i think yeah. about yeah. for me it's just about coming back to zero and then we make our decision or yeah. then we interact with the person we love so that we don't risk putting it on there you know we've all done it we've all taken stuff out on people we've all not been our best version but um I suppose it's just about remembering what the practice can help us um, yes. do. Yeah. So Absolutely. yeah, I hope all of that today. Yeah. Cool. I think that's, yeah, I think that's beautiful. And I'd like to um, wrap this up Nadia, because I know that you and I could really honestly talk very happily for about six hours, but that is not respectful for all of our time. So I really, really appreciate you. I was, I think it's just flipping brilliant. I love your take on yoga. I love hearing about your thoughts about the practice, the daily discipline, the reasons why we practice. And um, yeah, your thoughts on what the practice is involved. So, and I just, that listening. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's resonated. I I need to do more of that. I just think we need to all, if we do that more, mm. just to end on this note, I think lots of things are going to be all right if we just do that more and consistency and regular. Cause I mean, I lose, yes. I lose myself into things all the time and I think, oh my gosh, what's going on? And then I just think, okay, pause, reflect, few breaths, nervous system, and then we carry on so yeah listening yeah i love that and thank you hyper and two that's really really kind thing of you to say thank you. and thank you moon dance community for your comments and joining in and thank you so hopefully we'll be seeing everybody on thursday the 24th at 7 30 a.m <laughs> yeah. get out of bed be get out of that. bed do it I'll do it there. it's a great way to start the day yeah. And I can't wait. I really can't wait. And it's just so absolutely lovely and such an honour and privilege to speak to you, Nadia. So thank you. It was wonderful. Thank you, Kat. You take Speak care, everybody. Have a good evening. I love. Bye.